Every year, the American Quarter Horse Association proudly honors members who reach 50 years of breeding American Quarter Horses. AQHA recognizes the dedication and passion required to celebrate that 50-year anniversary, either cumulatively or consecutively. Many of the breeders eclipsing the 50-year mark date back to the early days of the association and have a wealth of knowledge and memories. We would like to share some of the stories, history, and breeding philosophies shared by these longtime breeders that have helped make the American Quarter Horse Association what it is today. More than 30 families and horse operations reached 50 years in 2012, either cumulatively or consecutively. These longtime members of AQHA have experienced the ups and downs, the hardships and triumphs that are a horseman's way of life. We hope you'll enjoy the stories and memories shared by these beloved members of AQHA. Rebecca Dodge Mazingo bought her first horse at age 10, recognized this year as a legacy breeder. 50 consecutive years of breeding American Quarter Horses. I've pretty much been there since the day that the first Quarter Horse came in in a Woodstock rack in the back of a pickup. Uh, one by four boards peeking through there and seeing him way up there when I was a little girl. You can imagine the surprise in Rebecca's father after she bought her first horse at age 10. My dad caught me on the out scale and said, what do you do? did you buy this horse? And I said, yep. And he goes, how do you plan to pay for it? I said, well, Dad, we're going to go home and sell my calf. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a kind of a plan. And <laughs> that determination and persistence paid off as she experienced a lifetime of memories with American Quarter Horses. I've looked through the eyes of a racehorse in the starting gate, and I've looked down the side of a halter horse in the World Show Arena, and I've, I've looked down the hoof to level it, and I've looked uh, in a, pulling those slimy feet of a newborn foal, and I've looked at every kind of uh, angle that you can look at a horse. I've looked over my shoulder to see if the heel horse had caught and it was time to face up and I've looked down my hip to see if that side pass pole was perfect in trail and I've just about ridden every event and I've had so many horses in the 50 years that I laid awake last night trying to remember them all and I so wished I would have kept a list of all the horses that I've trained and looked at and stuff and this necklace I'm wearing comes from a year that I trained in Germany, these are uh, Fennings, and I trained quarter horses in Germany, show horses. And uh, the most exciting moment, the most memorable moment, it all sews together like a quilt. And um, I decided last night I'd make a quilt with all my favorite horses' names on it someday. But the most exciting moment was when I leased a big black stallion named Old King Fritz. The girl that leased him to me, we were sitting on the sofa and she looked at me and she had tears in her eyes and she said, Becky, they'll tell you it's a sin to have horses and they'll tell you that uh, you're wrong and you're stupid and, and it's bad and that you're obsessed and that you're crazy. She said, Becky, being a horseman is a gift from God. And so that's what I'd like to leave from my 50 years is that, thank God that I'm a horseman. <laughs> Many of the breeders recognized this year remember what it was like when American quarter horses began to grow in popularity. We'll share some of their history and stories when we come back. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand. But at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, the long hauls, the never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W. Trusted. Whether celebrating 50 years as a legacy breeder, 50 consecutive years, or celebrating 50 cumulative years, many of the breeders recognized by the American Quarter Horse Association this year remember the early days of the breed. 
most people had even heard of a quarter horse and never seen one. And uh, everybody's kind of curious and uh, some people thought if it's just a quarter horse, that wouldn't be a real horse. <laughs> they couldn't understand. But at that time, um, you could uh, buy a grade mare and breed her to a registered stallion and if she would raise three foals, it would pass the inspection, court horse inspection for confirmation. Then them foals could be registered. And so that's the way I got started. For Wayne, it wasn't easy getting started. He and wife Mary experienced a major setback early on. The old mare and two of her foals were still in the pasture. And we had a real severe lightning storm one night and killed the old mare and both the foals. And so uh, I just had that one mare, so I had to start all over again. Wayne will turn 90 years young this month and jokingly spoke about what kept him going all these years. I tell you, you don't have to be short a couple of bricks up here to stay with it 50 years, but if you, if you are, it sure helps. <laughs> Lois French and husband Murray spent their years working cattle in Kansas, trying to breed a good working horse. But in the early days, she had to convince the family to check out these new American quarter horses. I influenced, he was a horseman, but not as much as me. And I influenced him to, let's investigate a little bit. And uh, we got our first fillies in uh, 46. And they were sired by a grandson of Ch Chief Number Five, Peter McEwline. And uh, out of those four, we saved two to make a foundation breeding arrangement out of. In 1948, we had a good wheat crop. And somehow I talked him into buying a new car and going to the Fort Worth stock show. <laughs> And that was a big deal. And at that show, we seen uh, uh, Pocoeno and Jesse James and Pretty Buck. And then we went out to the Wagner Ranch the next morning and looked at them again. But we seen Pocoeno and Jesse James work cattle. And uh, so that pretty well sensed what lines we were going to stay with. Although the Frenches found the stallions they wanted to focus on, they put a major emphasis on the broodmares in their breeding program. I have been a strong believer in the fact that your, your power is in your mares. It, it's a shame that the mares, you know, they're just really kind of overlooked. The, the mare, I figure from 50, 60 years of breeding, the mares produce about 80 percent of what qualities your colt gets. Lois expressed what the lifetime in the industry and receiving the 50-year breeder recognition meant to her. It's the biggest thing in my life, absolutely. And uh, I didn't have any children, and so the horses have just been my family. I really, really love those horses and, uh, and still do. I still have a Jesse James stud, and uh, it was just a, um, a life for me. It's possibly the most rewarding aspect of breeding American quarter horses. When we come back, we'll talk springtime and newborn foals. Each year, an average horse will need One place has it all. Tractor Supply. <laughs> As the American Quarter Horse Association recognized the members who reached the 50-year anniversary of their breeding program, one common thread was the joy of watching foals hit the ground come springtime. Seeing the colts in the spring when they're born and uh, out on the green grass and they run and play, 
it's kind of an exciting time and then trying to get the good one, get the perfect one, which there isn't, but to try and get as near perfect as you can is probably kept us going. Foles start hitting the ground, it's like Christmas every day. We can't wait to go out and see if we were right or not. Dealing with the baby foals was, was the part that I learned the most. I learned how to get slow, I learned how to move slow, and uh, I learned over the years how to get along without too many fights out of a baby. The first ones hey. were, they were ferocious. We were both on the ground, you know, and rolling around trying to handle something. And the older we got, the more wise we got, and the fewer fights we had. I was amazed how God gave them a good brain. And uh, it took a few years for us to learn that. <laughs> Still looking for that good horse. And uh, seeing the colts, like see the colts. And for me, I like to uh, see them uh, when you're uh, breaking them, training them, how they keep getting better as they go along. And it was interesting to me, which can't do much anymore. They say that someone who's looking forward to the next fall crop uh, never gives up, you know, <laughs> always has a dream in your heart, you know. So, uh, yeah, you always want, always looking for better grass, uh, more awesome stallions, and <laughs> a better fall crop, you know. Speaking of foals, we had to ask these longtime breeders what qualities, characteristics, and confirmation they wanted to achieve through their breeding program. Our goal is to have a, a lot of bone and a lot of muscle in a horse that can go all day, that's really tough, but also can move more like your modern day cutting horses. Uh, they move like a little horse, but they've got a little more size to them. And um, we've, we've been pretty successful so far in keeping that going. The quicker you can catch a cow, or the quicker you can turn a cow, get to a cow and turn her wide, the easier it is. If you want to rope one, the quicker you can get to it. By, uh, I think they got to have a little speed. When you're going against the time, you got to have speed. And uh, you need disposition. So speed and disposition. Mainly with the legs and the feet. If you don't have a good foot and a good leg under these horses, they won't stand our flint hills. They're rocky and they're rough. And so we tried very hard to have a good, solid confirmation on these horses with the cow ability. Horses with the bells and whistles, white walls, leather seat covers, and uh, sunroof, you know, the ones with the extra things that people wanted and they'd pay for. So if you had a really good horse with an exceptional head, uh, you know, one or two things about them that no other horse had, or maybe just one thing no other horse had, well, here they'd come, you know, they'd get on the plane. We were going back and forth to the airport selling these uh, horses of that, of that type, you know. So we, we, tr we tried to raise the best ones there were, and, and most of them weren't. You know, you're not going to have a 100% crop or even a 40%, you know. But the ones that do paid for the rest of them. And it was just a wonderful business for us. When we come back, we'll talk about what kept these breeders going for 50 years and what it meant for them to receive the 50-year breeders' recognition from AQHA. Every time a local business opens its doors or creates another laptop bag or hires another employee, it's not just good for business. It's good for the entire community. At Bank of America, we know the impact that local businesses have on communities. That's why we extended $6.4 billion in new credit to small businesses across the country last year. Because the more we help them, the more we help make opportunity possible. The American Quarter Horse Association's 50-year breeder recognition banquet had some memorable moments, like Bobby Wedeking of Stamford, Texas, having a little help from a young hand to put the recognition into perspective on his behalf. I would like to thank you all for bringing us here and just happy to be here to get this trophy and just God has done some very good things to us. Tell them. <clears throat> Tell them we got about 80 head of horses and come see us. And we also have 80 some head of horses 
if you would like to buy some. <laughs> 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 something else say? Oh, okay. And if you would like to take them off of our hands, <laughs> or one or two off of our hands, we'd be very pleased because every time we turn around, we're at alfalfa and all of this money we have to spend on alfalfa. If any of you have horses, you, as much as we have, um, you are probably surprised at all the money you are spending. Okay. <laughs> well, my little partner said just about everything. <laughs> Nothing else to say except I've met a lot of good friends all over the world. Showing horses, breeding mares, and we've had some good horses. And uh, I thank y'all for tonight's opportunity. For any breeder of American quarter horses, the journey to get to 50 years is often tough at times. So what keeps these breeders going, and what did it mean for them to receive this prestigious honor from the AQHA? If there wasn't any money to be made in the horse business, we'd live in a little old teardrop trailer, and we'd still have quarter horses. It wouldn't make any difference whether they made money or not. It was, it was our passion, and that's what we wanted to do. But, uh, quite a ride. And we, we didn't, Gwen and I never worked a day in our life. We enjoyed everything we did. Couldn't wait to get up in the morning. And we, we answered the phone till it, it got, you know, nine, ten o'clock sometimes. And it was just, a, I just wished everyone, everywhere could have the life we had. It was just terrific. I don't know how to say it. It's really great to be recognized for having stayed in the, in the breeding and in the industry that long. And I'm glad we did, I, <laughs> because we've enjoyed it all along the way. It's an honor to have been able to, to uh, be connected with the uh, horses and the association for this long, or the long period. I think it's definitely a humbling uh, situation for us, and uh, if anything, it probably drives us to uh, continue, and that uh, it, it kind of puts in to a, a permanent mark in the association that um, we, we're a part of a chapter in a book and that it's our job to continue the story. <laughs> My first first thought about that when I got it is, damn, we're old. And uh, uh, you gotta be old to make it through 50 years, you know, and uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think we're the only ones in the state of Wisconsin that have done this. The story of Tom and Carol Klamorowski's marriage and their American Quarter Horse Breeding Program had its ups and downs. This year's 50-year breeder recognition has a little extra special meaning for them. When the going got rough, you didn't quit. And uh, many, many was the time uh, that uh, my, my personal travels in life uh, took me through a couple of uh, financial setbacks. Uh, getting diagnosed with cancer just was a, you know, it was a mess up that you'd say, how far do we keep going with this or, or what do we do? And uh, anyway, stick to itiveness, I guess, is what we learned. Uh, Carol and I knew that bearing or following the uh, um, life expectancy tables, we were not going to live long enough to see our golden wedding anniversary because we got married when I was 40 and Carol was 45. So uh, the best we could do at that point was say, well, we're married to AQHA, let's go it, let's go the 50 and get the golden. And so that's kind of, it, it, for the last 10 years after we got that 40 year certificate, that's kind of what was sparking us. Well, let's go for the 50, and we did. For Jerry Vodder and wife Gwen, it was important to mention what AQHA meant to them and how the support from AQHA helped sustain their life in the horse industry. We got the AQHA behind us and uh, they made things possible we didn't think would ever uh, come about. You know, with the shows and, and uh, uh, the grand champion trophies and, and they, just, they, just, uh, they just fell in line and, and took care of us. And it was a great great uh, thing that uh, that they did and it was time 
because the uh, it was it was time for someone to take off with this thing and because otherwise it would have it would have gone ahead of the association because it was so much it was so much business and they were the quarter horse association was uh, was in uh, was ahead of us but as horses became a bigger thing and brought more money and uh, more people bought them well the association grew right with it and it, it was a it was a wonderful thing it was a wonderful thing and we all we owe everything to AQHA. It's this is not just because uh, we like to raise horses. You know, they they just uh, they just took care of the horse people. It was it was wonderful. We hope you've enjoyed the history and cherished memories shared by these longtime breeders of American quarter horses. For more information on the American Quarter Horse Association, visit aqha.com.